Today we're going to talk about what's called population genetics and Hardy-Weinberg law. So population genetics is where we combine sort of evolution with genetics. When you think about evolution, remember that populations evolve because their gene frequencies change, meaning how common certain traits are, which are genetically determined, those commonalities can change over time due to natural selection, mutations, migration. There's all kinds of things that could change them. And so when we're talking about evolution, we have to also include a little bit of genetics. So the Hardy-Weinberg law, we're going to talk about this in, um, in a lot of detail, actually. The alleles of a population, remember, what is an allele? It's a form of a gene, like big B and little b. The alleles of a population make up what's called the gene pool. So all the genes in the population are the gene pool. And we can describe these by what are called gene frequencies, which are how common a particular gene is. So the first formula that we use with Hardy-Weinberg law is that P plus Q is equal to 1. So what are P and Q? So P is the frequency, how common the dominant allele is. Now the dominant allele, think of the dominant allele as big B. So if we add up all the alleles or letters in the population, the number of copies of big B over that would give us the frequency of P. And then Q is the frequency of the recessive allele. Q is little b. Um, now, the formula sheet is going to give you that P plus Q equals 1, and it's also going to tell you that P is the frequency of the dominant allele, and that Q is the frequency of the recessive allele. They don't really explain any further than that, though, so you kind of have to know what to do with that information. So, here's a sample problem with this information. So, suppose you have a particular population. There are 30 individuals that are big B, big B, 50 big B, little b, 5 little b, little b. And you are asked what the frequencies are of P and Q. Now, there are actually a couple of different ways you can solve this, but I'm just going to teach you the way that I usually do it. So if there are 85 individuals in the population, that means there's 170 alleles. How am I getting that? Because, in other words, these 30 people are each carrying two copies of big B, right? So if I'm counting how many copies of big B there are, there are 60 copies of Big B for these 30 people, because each of them have two copies. And then these 50 people also have one copy of Big B. So there would be 60 copies of Big B here and 50 copies here. For little b, these 50 people all have one copy, so that's 50 copies of little b. And these five people each have two copies, because they're little b, little b, so that's 10 more copies of little b. So if I were to count up, and we're going to do a lab with beans, where you're going to use beans to represent alleles, and you'll see, I think it'll help you see how this works. If we count up all of this, that's 170 letters, 170 copies of the genes. So if we want the frequency of P and Q, here's how I would do it. I'm going to take 2 times the number of big B, big B individuals, plus... 1 times the number of big B, little b individuals over the total number of alleles. So, and that's going to give me P. So I, that would be 60, 30 times 2 is 60, plus the number of big B, little b is 50, over 170. Again, why 170? Because each individual has two alleles. And if you do that, you're going to get 0.65. Now, the beauty of this formula up here is that technically I can get Q simply by doing 1 minus P. That would give me Q. However, you can also do it the long way. So I can double the number of little b, little b individuals. So there's five of those. That's 10 copies of little b plus 50 copies of little b for these 50 individuals. Again, over 170. And I'm going to get 0. 3, 5, which is the same thing I would get if I had done this little shortcut, that 1 minus P would also give me Q. So this uh, is the frequency, or these are the frequencies of P and Q, which is giving us an idea of how common the dominant and the recessive allele are in a population. Okay, so moving on, this is a sample problem from an old AP exam. This was a numeric response problem. 
So they give us a population of mice, and they explain that they remove all the gray mice from the population, and therefore the population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Now, we haven't actually learned what that means yet, uh, but the reason they're telling you that is because when a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, I'm going to show you some shortcuts you can use. Their shortcuts are not going to work if the population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So that's why they're telling you this. They're basically saying, don't use the shortcut. You've got to figure out this the longer way. So they want you to calculate the frequency of the recessive allele for the remaining population of mice. So if you use the formula I just gave you, which again, is not on the formula sheet, if we take two times the number of little b, little b individuals, because each of those uh, have two copies of little b, plus the number of big b, little b individuals, and put that over two times the total population size, since there are twice the number of alleles as number of individuals in a population, we'll get what Q is. There are no individuals that are little b, little b, right? Because they pulled them out. So we only have big b, little b, so that's going to be 1,218 copies of little b there over the total number of alleles or letters in this population is going to be 4,118 not 2059. That's how many individuals there are, but I have to double that because each individual has two alleles. And if you divide that out, you get 0 0.295, and they wanted you to round to two decimal places, so that would be 0 0.30. Now, they actually accepted 0 0.29 to 0 0.30, so they accepted um, that range of answers on the AQ exam. So this is sort of a long way to calculate the frequencies of P and Q. If a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, there's a shortcut to this. So what is Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? So this is our second formula. This is also on the formula sheet. But what they don't tell you is what these variables stand for. We know that P is the dominant allele, big B. And we know Q is the recessive allele, little b. But they don't tell you this, and you've got to memorize it. P squared is going to be the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals. In other words, it's going to give us how many individuals out of the total should be big B, big B, homozygous dominant. 2PQ is going to give us heterozygous, and Q squared is going to give us homozygous recessive. Now, a big mistake people make is they get confused between Q and Q squared. Q is the frequency of the recessive allele. It's how common the gene is. So we're looking at all the little b, little b individuals, plus all the little b's that are in the heterozygous individuals. Q squared is just homozygous recessive. So you have to pay close attention to which information you're being given. So let's run through a couple of problems. Um, before we do that, so what does Hardy-Weinberg tell us? Well, the, the rule is, the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium formula says that the gene frequencies they should remain constant generation after generation. So if Q, let's just say, is 0 0.35, if the population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and I check it 10 years later, Q should still be 0.35. And 10 years after that, it's still 0.35. If it changes, if it goes up or it goes down, that tells us the population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and that that population is evolving for that particular allele. So that's one of the things that Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium can tell us. It can help us predict how many individuals should be homozygous and heterozygous, but it can also tell us if a population is evolving or not. If it's staying the same, then the population is in equilibrium. If it's changing, then the population is evolving. And we'll talk later about what factors would cause it to stay the same or cause it to change. So let's look at some sample problems. So if P is 0.7, what is Q? So remember, the formula sheet's going to tell us that P plus Q equals 1. So 1 minus 0.7 is going to give us Q 0 0.3. If it is in equilibrium, what percentage of organisms should be heterozygous? So remember, you got to kind of memorize this. P squared is our big B, big B. 2PQ is big B, little B. That's our heterozygous, which is what they're asking for here. And Q squared is little b, little b. So what is the um, percentage of heterozygous? So 2pq, which is going to be 2, 
times 0.7 times 0.3, which is going to be 0.42. That will be the frequency of heterozygous. And if they're asking for the percentage, you're just going to multiply that. Oh, sorry. We're going to just multiply that times 100. So our frequency times 100 uh, is going to give us 42%. Um, and that would be our percentage of heterozygous. All right, if the population consists of 250 individuals, how many of them would be heterozygous? So to get that, we'll take our total number of individuals times our frequency, 0.42, times 250, and that gives us 105. So this would be the predicted number that we would expect to be heterozygous. All right, so let's look at a, a slightly different problem. Black is dominant to white fur. 16% of the population are white. What is the frequency of P? Okay, and again, we're assuming this is in equilibrium, so that means P squared is going to give us big B, big B, 2PQ is our big B, little b, and Q squared is our little b, little b. Now, really important here, if 16% of them are white, that is Q squared, not Q. Remember, if you're trying to figure out whether they're giving you Q squared or Q, if they're talking about individual, individuals showing a trait or that are homozygous recessive or homozygous dominant individuals, that is Q squared or P squared or 2PQ. If they're talking about the allele, the gene, that is P or Q. So be very, very careful with that. I cannot stress that enough. So Q squared is 0.16. That means Q is going to be the square root of that, which is going to be 0.4. And that also means that P, remember P plus Q equals 1, is going to be 0.6, which is the answer to our question. What percent are heterozygous? This is going to be 2PQ. That would give us our frequency, and then we multiply by 100 to get 100%. So that's going to be 2 times 0.6 times 0.4. And that is going to give us 0.48, or changing that to a percent, 48%. What percent are homozygous dominant? Well, remember, homozygous dominant is P squared. So we take P, 0.6, we square it, that's 0.36, or as a percent, multiply that by 100, 36%. And then if there's 2,500 cats, how many are homozygous dominant? We're going to do 2,500 times our P squared. And that is going to give us 900. All right, one more practice problem. 300 mice are brown, 100 mice are white. Brown is dominant. Now, be very careful on a problem like this. So there are 400 mice. I have seen people make the mistake of saying, so 300 over 400, that should give me P squared. But that is not true because... Those 300, they show the dominant trait. It doesn't say they're homozygous dominant. So that means it's not P squared. 300 over 400 is actually P squared plus 2PQ, which is not helpful to us because that's including our homozygous and our heterozygous. But remember, if white is recessive, that means that all the white ones are, ho are homozygous recessive, little b, little b. So 100 over 400 would actually give us Q squared. So that means that Q would be the square root of that, which is 0.5, and then P plus Q is 1, so P will also be 0.5, and then to get the heterozygous, remember that's 2PQ, so 2 times P times Q times, they want to know how many cats, so 400, I'm sorry, mice, um, times 400, and that gives us that 200 would be expected to be heterozygous. All right, this last problem works the same way. We have 396 red, 557 white. The white is recessive, so 557 over our total, 953, that is going to give us Q squared. And from there, square root of Q, we will get, I'm sorry, square root of Q squared, we'll get that Q is going to be equal to 0.764. P is going to be equal to 0.236, and then the number of homozygous dominant, you'll get your P squared times your total. I'm going to run out of 
amount of time, but that is what you would do.